ever made. Paid for itself. Alright, so what we'll need to do is open up a web browser and we're going to go to Facebook.com. I'm pretty sure anyone that's trying to get out of work today knows exactly where Facebook is. So we're going to go to Facebook.com. Alright, and when you're on here, obviously you'll want to log in with your profile. Alright, your own little personal information on here. Because we're going to show you how to make a business page. Alright, it's so the difference between a profile and a business page. A profile is something that you can obviously utilize to keep up with friends, loved ones, family, whatever it may be. A business page, or just a page in general, is going to be for your business. All right, so in this case, you can make it for your real estate business, you can make it for whatever you want to. Um, and it's going to be the exact same steps each time. But we're going to go step by step on how to actually create this, and then also some ways to spruce it up a little bit. Uh, not too much, but then obviously once you have it out there, you know, start to advertise it as much as possible. Another big thing on a personal profile, you can send out friend requests. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this inside up here. On a business page, they have to like your page. All right, so they do have to like your page in order to access it. All right, so once again, if you don't have a Facebook profile, we need to have that set up. Just go through here and fill out this quick information. I think it'll set you up automatically. All right, and if you already have a Facebook account, which I'm pretty sure everyone does if you're on here today, then go ahead and log in with your email or phone and then your password as well, and then click the login option. All right, so go and put inside your email address or your login info, and then click the login button up here. I'm going to give everyone a little extra time just in case you do need to sign up real quick on here. Jeez, I'm coughing over here today. I'm, I'm going to try my hardest not to cough inside here. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to click on the login option right at the top. Alright, and as you can see, once you log in, then you're going to be right over inside the back end of your Facebook account. Alright, so you're going to be inside your news feed, as they call it. Alright, so where every status update, every picture, every video that one of your friends shares or any page that you like will show up right over here. So whenever we do create this page, whenever someone does like your page, your information that you update will actually show up inside their news feed as well. Um, or up here, if you ever happen to have on the page, you can also start to create ads as well and link it back over to your page. Alright, but in order to create this page, I feel like I've said the word page 18 times in the past one minute. Alright, but what you'll want to do... Up at the top up here where we have our little address bar, let's go to facebook.com forward slash and then the word pages. Alright, so facebook.com forward slash and the word pages. I'm very scared as to what's going to come up here. Alright, but once we go to facebook.com forward slash pages, we're logged into our personal account. Okay, good. It's the same thing I'm seeing on my other screen. In case you guys haven't been to one of these classes before, I've got two laptops in front of me. One where I'm actually um, doing the class, and then the other one where I kind of do the class before we do the class, if that makes any sense. If I want to jump in and make sure I'm teaching it correctly. And I was kind of scared as to what the top suggestions were going to be. I didn't know what was going to pop up, but it's the exact same thing, so that's awesome. Alright, but when we come back over here, it's actually going to give you suggestions on pages. Alright, but if we actually take a look right up here... In the top right, there's actually going to be an option to create a page. Alright, so the top right, let's go ahead and click on that Create Page option. Alright, and this is where you can actually go through and begin the process of making your page. Or, of course, if you already have a page, you can also go over to the option that says your pages right up here to view all of them as well. Alright, but I'm going to click on the create page option at the top right up here. And this is going to allow me to come over and actually create it. And if you ever need to get back over to this page, you can also just go, well, I'm going to scroll down just a hot second on here. But at the top, as you can see, you can also go over to facebook.com forward slash pages forward slash create alright so if you want to jot that down real quick you can go to facebook.com forward slash pages 
forward slash create. Right, so if you ever need to get back over to this and you want to create another page, you definitely can. All right, now on here, these are the six different kind of categories as to what you can actually select. Um, so if you're trying to make something for a cause or a community, a brand or a product, or in our case, more than likely, a company or a local business or place. <clears throat> well, in this particular occasion, we're going to click on local business or place because they have an option for real estate. All right, so of course, if you want to, you can also go over company, organization, or institution if you'd like to. In this particular case, I'm going to click on local business or place. All right, and when you select that, you now get the option of your drop down. So as you can see, choose a category. And this is where you can choose whatever category you might be in. They're in alphabetical order to make it a little bit simpler to look at. But if I scroll down here, as you can see, there is a category for real estate. Now you can also go through a company, organization, or anything of that sort, and you can actually scroll down. But as you can see, if you scroll down here, there's not a category for real estate. You could do small business if you wanted to, or you could do something else on here, but not a category for real estate. So typically, local business or place is the way to go. All right, so if I scroll down, I'm going to select the real estate option under category. <coughs> All right, and then on here, as you can see, I mean, why are so many people calling me? <laughs> it's three calls in the past one minute. That's insane. I haven't had a call in like four hours. It's it, They know right when the class starts. Every time. Alright, and then right where you can do over here is you can put inside your business name or place name. So in this particular case, if you happen to have a team name that you're trying to create this for, or if you just want to do your first and last name and then realtor, you can definitely add that in up here. Whatever you want to do. Alright, and then of course the street address, city, state, zip, phone on here as well. I'm trying to figure out who I who I could do this for. Let me see who I can. Uh, it shouldn't be this hard to choose someone with all the offices we work for, but I'm having I'm having writer's block if that's the word I'm thinking of as to who I want to put this in for. Well, the main one that comes to mind, I'll do this for them. I don't think she's on it today. I'll send it over to you. You've been randomly selected, Molly Biscan, to receive a page. And then for the street address, city, state, zip, and phone number, just go ahead and put inside, obviously, your market center address. Or, of course, if you want to, you can also put inside, um, you know, if you happen to have your own business address, don't put inside your home phone number, or home address, just to give you a heads up. Do not do that. All right, let me see. I'm having to pull up their information now. You think I would have come prepared to this? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put inside the address on here. Here we go. All right, here we go. Perfect. Six. And, of course, for your phone number, I would definitely suggest putting inside a direct line of contact for yourself. Whatever that may be, whether it's a cell phone or it's your own business phone. Right, and then once you have that completed, let's click the Getting Started option, or Get Started down here. It's kind of hard to see. Let's go a little bit further. Put in the Get Started option. Now, of course, one thing to note on here, whatever you put inside for this title up here, or whatever your business is, is named as, once you start to get up so many likes, they won't allow you to change that. So make sure you put inside something that you really want it to be. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But now we have that information added in. Let's click the Get Started option, this little blue button down here.
Alright, when we click on that, there we go. Jeez. Freaked me out a little bit, man. <laughs> Alright, so once you click on that, then it's going to take you over to these four different steps that you have on here. Alright, so sometimes it might be a little bit different when you're taking a look at it. Sometimes they might not even give you the option of putting inside the unique Facebook web address. Alright, sometimes you have to get above 25 likes to do that. Alright, but if they do give that to you down here, congratulations, because you're going to have your own little unique Facebook web address. Hopefully they just give to everyone now. It'd be great if they did. So now you can actually start branding with this. So you can say, hey, go find us on Facebook, and then you can just put in what that web address is. And so instead of it being facebook.com forward slash pages slash and a bunch of letters and numbers, it'll be a little bit easier to take a look at. All right, so first thing first, it says add categories, a description, and a website to improve the ranking of your page in search. All right, so for categories on here, I believe we get to have three. So I'm going to type inside the word real estate and see some different real estate options that we have. So feel free to add in whichever ones you want to. I'm going to add inside real estate. And I might add inside, as you can see, click a specific category, then it gives you some other options over here. So maybe I'll put in real estate agent. Now, got to type it back in. All right, or you can just type out some different ideas as to what you want to add inside for your about page, as to how you're going to rank inside searches. Maybe I'll put in real estate service as well. So as you can see, you can have three on there. I can't type anymore. Those are the three that I suggest that I always use. Real estate agent, real estate, and then real estate service. Uh, you can use whatever else you want to. If you're a commercial real estate agent, it has it on there. If you're an escrow, obviously, title and development, investments. All right. All right, and then down here it says add a few sentences to tell people about your what your page is about. Uh, this will help it show up in the right search results. You'll be able to load, or sorry, be able to add more details later from your page settings. All right, so we do get 155 characters on here. All right, so feel free to type inside whatever you want to. So maybe in this particular case, I'm going to say, you know, Molly Biscan is a real estate agent with Keller Williams Realty on the water in Sarasota, Florida. She looks forward to helping or so. can't believe it, but I left out with one character left. That was fantastic. But feel free to add inside whatever you want to on here. It's completely up to you. You do get 155 characters, so it's a little bit larger than a tweet. <laughs> Tweets are 140. <laughs> All right, but feel free to put inside whatever you want to. And as you can see, and they said on there, you can't add more details later. This is going to be one of your short descriptions. You can add a long description later on. And then down here, it asks you to put inside your website, or if you don't have a website, like a Yelp or other links or anything of that sort. Um, well, everyone will have a website. So in this case, you can put inside an e-edge or an e-agency website, or if you happen to have a different website altogether that you utilize, you can put that in down here too. So for the time being, and you can change this later on, FYI, this is not set in stone. For the time being, I'm going to put inside their Market Center one. I remember, you can change that later on. It is not set in stone. Right. And then down here, if you do have the option that says 
choose a unique Facebook web address to make it easier for people to find your page. Once this is set, it can only be changed once. All right, so you can go back in here and change this at a later date, but it can only be changed once on here. All right, so in this case, I'm just going to type inside Molly Biscan Realtor. So if she wants to change that later on, you definitely can. Now remember, you can change it one more time after you set it. All right, but once you change it that second time, you're set in stone. Trust me, that it becomes a little bit harder. Whenever you have so many likes, I believe it's over 200, uh, it gets hard to change the name of your Facebook page because they're afraid that you're going to build up a bunch of likes and then change it and start spamming them with something else. Even if you're just changing like the branding, that's the hard part about it. You have to send them over a legal document, like an electric bill or a water bill, that has your new name on it. It's very interesting, but they take it very, very serious. Alright, so you can put inside whatever you want to, facebook.com slash, he's got Molly Biscayne Realtor if it's available. Alright, you can put inside whatever you want to, so now on your business cards, or on your email signature, you can now say, hey, find me on Facebook, and then you can just put inside, you know, search for Molly Biscayne Realtor, or whatever you want to put inside for that. Or you can just say, slash Molly Biscayne Realtor. All right, so much like on a custom LinkedIn URL or a custom Twitter or YouTube or Pinterest, um, all the exact same. You always want to keep that branding the exact same across all the channels. So if they're looking for you on Facebook, they might be on Pinterest the next day and say, oh, hey, let's see if we can find them over here as well. They're going to search for your name. So make sure it's as close as possible, if not the exact same. Uh, down here is Molly Biscan Realtor, real establishment, business, or venue. The answer is yes. And will Molly Biscayne Realtor be the authorized and official representation of this establishment, business, or venue on Facebook? The answer, once again, is yes. Basically saying that, hey, this is our information, this is our page, this is our business. So you're claiming ownership to this, and you are saying that you are a business. Because you are. You're your own business. I think it's in, like, the slogan. Is it a, a business worth having? It's something like that. Life worth living, business worth having, career verse, worth developing. It's something like that. I hear people say it all the time. All right, and then once that's complete, we'll just click the Save Info option down here. Now, of course, you can skip over this if you want to come back to it at a later date, but since we're walking through it, obviously, let's fill it out. At least to the best of our ability. You can come back and change this later on. All right, but we'll click that blue Save Info button at the bottom down there. And FYI, in case you guys are wondering, this is being recorded. My ears currently hurt because I have two headsets in. One for the headset for my phone to call in and one for the headset to record it on the screen. My pain is your joy because you can rewatch this later on tonight. You think I get one of those headsets um, that has like the openings where it can go around it, but no, I've got the ones that are straight down so it pushes the uh, earbuds very much into my ears. But this hour-long class is nothing compared to the three-hour ones. After those three-hour ones, it, they hurt so bad. But you don't need to know all that. But you did anyway. So there you go. Alright, so I'm going to click the Save Info button before I go any more personal inside the headset I'm wearing. Alright, and the next option, as you can see, we have Profile Picture, where you can actually upload your own profile picture for this. And so as you can see, you can upload from a computer, you can import from a website. Uh, more than likely, just do the upload from computer button. It makes it that much simpler. Or if you do want to try and import it from a website, you do what you got to do. I click on upload from computer. Since I don't have her particular headshot quite yet, I'll have to get it from now. Whenever I give this to her, she can update it. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to use this as a headshot for the time being. All right, so I'm going to upload this real quick. It's not going to show very well because it needs to be in a square format, and that is not a square. As you can see, it's going to show terribly. That is unacceptable for me, so I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to search for a Keller Williams logo. I don't like it. I could add inside mine, but I really don't want to. I don't want my headshot to be on there. Is this blurry? That's not blurry. 
I think I'm going to save it. There you go. There we go. I feel better now. All right. Now, once you have your headshot added in, remember you can't come back and change that headshot at any time. Not too much on your Facebook page is set in stone. Then let's click the next option. Or if you need to, you can obviously leave this blank and come back to it at a later date. When I click the next button, then it's going to say, do you want to add it to your favorites? Um, so if you want to, whenever you log into you know, Facebook, obviously the favorites are going to be at the top left up there, news, feed, messages, events, as you can see. If you add this to your favorites, it'll just make it that much simpler for you to find it later on. Um, so if you want to, go and click the add to favorites option. All right, and it'll add it right over here. So whenever you log into Facebook from now on, Alright, so once you log into Facebook from now on and you're under your news feed at the top left, it'll have that. So to give you an idea as to what that's going to look like, just so you can get a better idea, you don't have to follow along, just kind of watch real quick. So I'm on Facebook.com. Here are the favorites that are going to be right up here. Alright, now I've got a lot of pages on here, so that's why the pages pop up. And yours might as well. Typically it'll come up with pages option. But if you want them to be at the very, very top up here to access it that much faster, you can go to, you know, add it over to your favorites. Uh, it's completely up to you if you want to add it over to the favorites, though. All right, so once that's done, you can either add to the favorites and then click Next, or if you're like me, I'm going to skip it for right now and click the Skip option. Regardless, once it's completed, click the little button at the bottom right down here. All right, now this last part, <laughs> this is where they get you. This is going to be for a Facebook advertisement. Um, so if you want to pay to advertise on Facebook, it's actually a great way to reach out to people, and it's relatively more less inexpensive. Is that what I'm trying to say? More inexpensive? It's a better cost for your buck, is what I found out. Because you can actually get clicks over to your website, or people liking your page, or anything of that sort, um, for much less than like Google AdWords. But for the time being, let's just go and click the skip option on here. If you want to learn more about Facebook advertisements, we did do a class, it was a while back, but I think we did a class about six months ago or so about Facebook advertisement, but we're not going to talk about that today. We're just going to talk about the free stuff. All right, so let's click that skip option at the bottom right as well. All right, now when we click that skip option, we are now over on our page. So congratulations, you have created a skeleton of a page. Alright, so first thing that comes up, obviously, now, if you've ever been on a page before, you'll be able to see kind of what it, you know, kind of looks like. Where you're going to have some of the stuff that they can add in. So right over here, here's, it'll come up with this getting around. Let's click the close option, because we're actually going to talk about this. So if that pops up, just click the close button. But down here, as you can see, it's very, very similar to what your profile will look like, where you can add in a status update, you can add inside a photo if you want to. Down here, here's obviously your wall of all the information that's going to pop up. As you can see, we had a profile picture originally, and then we changed it on here, so it shows it for both. We have our map and our information down here, so we can actually go through and update, update that later. At the top left up here, we have our profile picture. And if you ever need to update it, as you can see, update profile picture, you can just click on that. Back over here, Molly Biscan Realtor, Real Estate Agent, Real Estate Service. Alright, and the first thing that we can actually do on here, if you want to, you can obviously like the page. I think we're making like a... That was the sixth call we've got in the past 27 minutes. I think we're hitting like milestones today of people that are calling during classes. Alright, but if you want to, go ahead and like the page. So obviously you could be the first person that's liked it. Alright, but the next thing we need to do is add a cover. All right, so a cover photo right up here is going to be, as we can see, I won't go any higher. It's going to take up all this little gray space in the background. Now, you can make it a cover photo of whatever you want to. All right, some people like to do it of a home that they're listing. Well, they'll make a custom cover photo. Um, or they like to use one of their city. 
All right, for the time being, what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do at least, is I'm going to open up a brand new tab. All right, and I'm going to go to facebook.com forward slash Keller Williams Realty, and we are going to borrow or take the cover photo of the KWRI office over in Austin, Texas. Uh, another thing that you can do, you can also search for you know, other people around the area that might have cover photos that you'd like to utilize as well. Um, typically, if you do like visit and then your city, usually there is some type of visit your city company that's around there and you can usually use their cover photo as well. Like over here, for instance, in Orlando, we have visit Orlando or visit Florida. All right, but I'm going to go to facebook.com forward slash Keller Williams Realty. As you can see, they've got that custom one as well. All right, and here's their little cover photo that's in the background. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this so I can actually view their cover photos. All right, and then if you want to, you can actually go forward or backwards by clicking the little arrow over here. If it's the Keller Williams one, there could be some copyrights on photos if they happen to have one. Um, I've never really seen it on a cover photo like this. But if it's the Keller Williams one, since you're part of KW, you can utilize this one. But typically, if you happen to take something from someone else, ask them first. Or if you happen to own the photos, then obviously you can utilize them. All right, but in this particular one, I'm just going to kind of scroll around. I'll take this particular one right here. All right, the never back down, we are number one. All right, so in order to get this, all you have to do is just right click on it. Well, maybe I can't actually get it. There we go. I must have done something wrong. I apologize. Right click on it, and then right over here, there should be an option on yours that'll say save image as or save image. So you can actually save this cover photo image. All right. So as we were talking about before, for copyright, you know, infringement and everything, since it's part of KW, you can utilize this if you're a member of KW. Obviously, you are if you're watching this. All right. So I'm going to click the Save Image As option. Saved it to my desktop. So now I can actually go back over to my cover photo. And we can click the Add a Cover option. Now, of course, you can use whatever other photo you want to completely up to you. I know some people like to advertise a new home that they have listed and that's perfectly fine as well. Alright, but if we click this add a cover option at the top left, we can actually add inside our cover photo for the page. So once I click that add a cover, it says, do you want to choose from your photos, photos that we've uploaded on our page, or do you want to upload a photo? So in this case, I'm going to do upload photo. All right, and under here, then we can actually find wherever our cover photo is. So mine just happens to be on the desktop. So we'll select our cover photo and then click the open option wherever it may be. All right, it could be under your pictures, could be under downloads. If you're on the desktop like me, that's perfect. Alright, and then once we do that, as you can see, it automatically uploads. And you can drag in case your image is a little bit bigger. That's a great question, actually. Alright, but you can't actually reposition it on here. Uh, the cutter, cover photo dimensions, as we have over here, it says it's going to be 851 for the width by 315. 
So 8, 5, 1 by 315. All right, so 851 by 315 is what you're looking at. All right, so you're going to make it fit inside, exactly inside here. And, of course, watch out because this is going to take over part of that image, obviously. All right, but once you have it set up, you can just click the Save Changes option. I just Google searched it. <laughs> Nine times out of ten when I don't know the answer, I usually just go to Google. And then it actually came up, Facebook.com help popped up. All right, so now we happen to have a new cover photo on here. Invite your friends. I'm aware. Click the close option again. <laughs> there you go. Viewer32. Canvas has a cover photo. Like an editor on there that you can use. You can also Google search Facebook cover photo free, and I'm sure there are plenty of different places where you can actually go in and create a different cover photo. Especially if you're trying to do like a collage type version. I just use Publisher and Photoshop because I just make them over here. <laughs> Alright, now the next thing to do, this is a relatively new-ish item to take advantage of, but there's also an option down here that says Create Call to Action. So as you can see, add a button to get people to take an action from your page, such as a shop or sign up. So in this case, let's go and click that Create Call to Action option. A little button down here. I'll just give everyone a second to catch up. But once we click that Create Call to Action option down here, as you can see, add a button to your page that takes people directly to your app or website. All right, so if you want to, we can change this from Shop Now, Book Now, Contact Us, Use App, Play Game, Sign Up, Watch Video. All right, so if you want to do the App option, say if you're trying to do your Keller Williams app, you could do Use App, and then you could put inside the website down here. Um, typically, I use Contact Us. Makes it a little bit simpler. All right, and then you can put inside your website down here. As you can see, www.mywebsite.com. So in this case, you can put inside whatever your website domain is. All right, whatever it may be. So once again, I'll put inside www.kwsarasotametro.com. And then if you have a mobile website, say if there's something a little bit different for mobile visitors, put that inside over here too. So in ca that case, for the mobile website, say if you're using your e-agency website, you could put inside that mobile downloader link, the little app URL that you have. All right, or since it is optional, you really don't have to worry about it, but I'm going to put that in one more time just to cover all my bases. All right, so once you add inside those URLs, you can then click the Next option down here. All right, so I'll click the next button at the bottom right. As you can see, iOS destination, choose where to send people when they tap the button on iPhone or iPad. You can either take them over to the website or the app. So if you do happen to set this up, where it's the contact us, then if you want them to, whenever they're on iOS, you can then take them over to the app. If you put inside your app URL on there. In this case, I'm going to leave it as website. All right, and then we'll click the next option at the bottom right one more time. And then once again, Android destination. All right, same thing if someone happens to have like a Samsung 
or LG. Anything that's not an iPhone, basically, that's an Android. <laughs> Alright, so if you want to change that out, then once again, either website or app down here if you want to switch it up. Alright, but once that's created, then we'll just click the Create option. All right, so I'm going to click the Create option on here. And there you go. So as you can see, your Call to Action button is ready. This button is now showing on your page. You can test or edit it here. Click the Next option, View Results. Check here just how many times your call to action CTA button has been clicked in the last seven days. So you can see it right over here under the contact us option. I'll actually show you all of your information over here too. Alright, or if we need to. Yes. Yeah, you build your Facebook page inside the personal Facebook account. Alright, so under contact us, as you can see, you have the option to either go to the link. You can edit that if you need to change it later on to a different website, a different app or you can delete it all together. Alright, so that's how we can fix up that call to action option. It's a mouthful right there. Yeah, no problem. Uh, go to facebook.com forward slash pages and you'll be able to create a page. Facebook.com forward slash pages. Alright, so one of the last things we'll actually do over on this page, we need to edit some of the back end information. So let's click on the settings option at the top right up here for our page. So right now we've got our page developed, in theory. We've got our logo, our headshot right over here, basically our profile picture. We have our cover photo set up. We have our little contact us, or whatever you want to consider it over here, a little call to action. All right, well, let's go over here and let's check out our settings. And right, check out some of the other items that we can actually set up. It's the saddest day ever. I just looked at my pretzels, and there are only two left. And then a bunch of remnants of the old pretzels. I have to go buy new pretzels. If you ever get a chance, uh, put pretzels inside chocolate, and then freeze them. Oh my lord. So good. It's insane. That's my tip for you for today. It's almost the weekend, so you might as well get a weekend snack. All right, we're going to click the settings option up here at the top right. It's going to take us to the back end settings. All right, the back end settings over here of our page. All right, so if we're taking a look up here, as you can see, page visibility, it's currently published. But if you ever need to change that, you just click the edit option. L O L. Thank you, viewer 27. I appreciate you. All right, right over here, posting ability. Anyone can post to my page timeline, anyone can add photos. Let's click the edit option on that. And let's tell them no. And I want you riff raft on my page. This is my page. I built this. All right, so if you want to change anything, just click the edit option on here. All right, and as you can see, there's the option to allow other people to post to my page timeline. Uh -huh. I don't like that. You can either allow photos and videos posts. You can review posts on here. But I'm going to do the disable posts by others on my page timeline. I do not like that. I want to make sure that everything that we're posting is what we're going to be doing on here. All right, I don't want someone else coming in here. It's not a community page or anything. All right, and if you ever change anything, much like in eEdge or MyKW, make sure you click the Save Changes option or the Save and Continue option. Otherwise, everything that you did previously will not set up correctly. Targeting and privacy for posts. Alright, so if we click the edit option on here, 
As you can see, allow targeting and privacy options when I create posts on my page. Let's go and click the uh, check option on here if you want to learn more about it. When you create a post, you can choose which people see it in newsfeed by selecting your audience's interests, gender, age, and more. You can also, sorry, you also have the option to control who sees the post on your page's timeline by limiting the audience by location and language, too. So if you want to, that's a pretty cool feature as well. So in case you happen to have people that have liked your page and you only want to display it for a certain amount of people, you can do that. All right, but I'll click the Save Changes option on here. People can contact my page privately. I would leave that there because you never know who might contact you and might be a potential lead on there. All right, but if you need to change anything like on the tagging ability, only people who help manage my page can tag photos on it. Um, if you want to change that up, you want to make sure that other people can tag it as well. Say you happen to do an open house and you know the seller happens to want to tag people inside it. You never know. <laughs> then obviously, yeah, you can change that up. Uh, country restrictions. Page is visible to everyone. Unless you're just trying to show it over in the United States or only over in a certain country, obviously leave this as is. Age restriction. Typically, I would just say leave that to everyone. No words are being blocked from the page. You can change that if you want to. As you can see right down over here for profanity as well. I would highly suggest not using any profanity on your page. Make it a business page. It needs to be family friendly. Similar page suggestions. Choose whether your page is recommended to others. Uh, leave that as yes, definitely. Comment ranking is turned on for your page. That's fine. And if you happen to have another page out there, you can actually merge duplicate pages. Or, if you ever decide to delete this page to create a new one or something happens, you can also delete your page down here too. All right, now on the left-hand side, we also have the option for page info. So I'm going to go and click on page info up here. It's going to make it... Oh, never mind. My apologies. We'll get back to that in a second. All right, but as you can see, whenever we click on anything, it's going to be a little black up here. Post attribution. You can either post as the page, which is what you'll want to do, or you can post as yourself. In this case, I would obviously always utilize this, but there is a way where you can actually post as yourself later on. We'll show you that. Notifications down here. If you want to change your notifications, right up here on Facebook, you can get a notification every time there's an activity on your page or an important page update. Uh, get one notification every 12 to 24 hours on all activity and updates where you can turn it off. So in this case, I'm going to say get a notification. And then you can go through and you can actually update how they're going to notify you if it's turned on or turned off. Same thing with the messages and the email as well. Completely up to you if you want to change that. Now one other thing that's really, really big, and we'll talk about this and then we'll hop back over to that about page, because that's going to be the next big stuff on it, are the page roles. Alright, so let's say it comes down, you've built up this page, now all of a sudden you need to refer it out, you have an admin, all right, or you've hired someone, like Scott Leroy Marketing, I'm not doing a, a shameless plug or anything, but you've hired someone to manage this page for you. Alright, well you can actually add them this way so they won't have to have your login or anything of that sort your page will basically just display inside their profile now as well for them to utilize All right, so if you ever need to do that you can actually add them over here alright so an admin is kinda of the top dog it's where they can do whatever they want to they can change whatever they want to they can delete whatever they want to alright so if you have some trust issues I in this case I would <laughs> Alright, if you if you don't trust the person that you're giving it over to, I would not give them admin privileges. Because they can do whatever they want to with it. You can give them editor options over here where they as you can see, edit the page, send messages, post as the page, create ads. They can basically do everything. With the exception of kind of going inside and deleting people off the page rolls. They can't really update too too much on it. But they're gonna have everything that they'll need. So editor is usually the way to go for that. As you can see they're kind of in order. Uh, moderator can respond to and delete comments on the page send messages to the page see which admin created a post or comment create ads and view insight alright so they can't actually post anything but they can go through there and they can update everything and make sure everything is clean and good to go you also have advertiser can see which admin created a post or comment creates ads and views insight alright and then finally over here analyst can see which admin created a post or comment and view insight. Alright, so the order from top dog all the way down 
to analysts down here, kind of in order for you. All right, editor is typically what I would suggest. It's kind of like the second in command, so it's perfect if you were trying to get someone else uh, to take over the page for you so they can start to post out stuff on a daily basis, but you don't want to give them too, too much control. Now, whenever you do this, if you're friends with them, all right, so if you're on your personal profile and you're a friend with them, you can actually just type inside their first name and last name up here and then select to add them. All right, if you're not friends with them and you want to add them in, they will need to go and like your page. All right, they need to go over and like your page, and then you can add them by their email address that's linked up with their profile. All right, so in this case, if I liked your page and you're trying to add me, you would go over there and you type inside scottleroymarketing at gmail.com because that's what this account is under. All right, and then once you add that in, you just click the Save option down here. It'll ask you for your password to protect it. You put inside your password, and then it'll send them a request to basically be an administrator or an editor of this particular page. All right, so it's pretty cool how that comes up. All right, now I'm going to go and click on the Page button at the top left up here to go back to our main page. So I'm going to click on the little page option up here. Ugh. They keep giving me these little tips. You can listen to them if you want to, but I'm going to pass. All right, and as they were talking about before, for the page info, or the general info, let's click the About option right here to the right-hand side of Timeline. All right, to the right-hand side of Timeline. All right, so I'm going to click on the About option over here. All right, now as you can see, then it's going to come up with all of our information. So here's the overview. Here's our little map. That's where we said we were located. Here's our little short blurb that we added in previously. Here's our website, our phone number. Here's the map location. If you want to add inside hours, you click the Add Hours option. Obviously, I jumped the gun. My apologies. Let me go back to Overview. Same thing with the price range. When I said I jumped the gun, it's because it clicked on the page info option. So if you want to change any of your page info stuff, just click the page info button over here on the left-hand side. All right, and as you can see, here's some of our page information. All right, so here's our category. If you never need to edit it, once again, edit option right over here. Here's the name. So if we need to edit it, we can our subcategories that we set up, our Facebook web address. Now remember, as you can see right now, you can now direct people to Molly Biscayne Realtor. If we click Change Web Address, remember once again, you can only change it one time. That's going to go back real quick. We're going to go back. There we go. All right, but if you need to update it one more time, you can. Our address, in case you ever happen to move, Start info when we join Facebook. The hours of operation. All right, so if you want to add inside when you are available for people to contact you, just click on Enter Hours of Operations, and then it'll give you the option right over here. So if you don't want to display anything, you can put No Hours Available. If you're 24 7, if you've closed down, we're right over here, Open for Selected Hours. Then you can click the Add Hours option, and it'll allow you to go through you know, when are you available. Let's say 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Click the Add option and adds it in. 
All right, so let's say you're only available on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and on Thursday or Friday, you're available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Well, you also have the option to add hours once again. And if that ever changes, just click the X button. You can switch it up. Now we do have our short description over here. All right, so if you need to change that up, remember it was 155 characters. 155 characters. All right, we have our Impressum. I'm actually looking this up right now. Uh, it actually, I've never utilized this before because it says it's required by law in certain countries, i.e. Germany. All right, so there you go. So, uh, any, this, I'm literally reading this from what I just found because I've never set this up before, but I figured you might want to know about it. The Impressum section generally has these kind of basic informations regarding your Facebook page, uh, name of your business or organization, address of the organization, contact information, name of the owner, registration and license number, links to your official website's Impressum page. So it's up to you if you want to add that inside. Oh, never mind. Save changes. I just committed one of the flaws that I always do. I always click that save changes option. All right, but if you do want to add inside and impress them, you can. Now over here you get your long description. As we saw before, this is our short description. You can also add inside a long description. So once again over here, provide some more information about your business, brand, or organization, including details like your background, mission, or awards. So if you happen to have something written out on your LinkedIn page or over on your face or not your Facebook, but over on like your website, if you want to copy and paste, put it over here, or if you want to create something a little bit different, kind of like a biography section like we have on our KW profile, you can add that right over here. All right, since we've got about five minutes left, I'll get you guys out in a second. Price range, in case you have a particular price range that you work with. All right, you can put it inside the little dollar signs. The only time I ever really see this is for food stuff. And I always know that once it gets above the $1 sign, it's into the $2 sign, that's when I can start to dress fancier at restaurants. I've never been to a $3 sign or a $4 sign one. I've been at Chipotle a lot, so I can only imagine that they're... We're, I'm just going to put Chipotle in the $2 sign area. I'm pretty sure they're a $1 sign, but regardless, it makes me feel better. <laughs> Alright, finally, if you happen to have type of parking around your area... And then the other big one, email address. All right, so if you want to add inside an email address, let me see if I can remember what hers is. I think it's mollybiscan at kdb.com. But I have a strong feeling that I'm going to mess it up. It does not cost to invite them over. Uh, it costs if you're going to do any type of Facebook advertisement, though. I'm just going to type this inside and see if it's correct. We'll leave it up. So you type inside your email address and click the Save Changes option. And then, of course, once again, whenever you save it, it pops you back up to the top. But then, once again, if you need to change out your website, you have the official page right over here. Enter the official brand, celebrity, or organization your page is about. You can add that in if you want to. Then here's your Facebook page ID. All right, so what the person was talking about previously, they said, does it cost to invite friends? No. The answer is no. Um, right up here, you have the little three dots right next to where it says messages. And we have a couple options on here. You can either invite friends, if you happen to have friends over on your personal profile that you want to invite over to your page. You can invite email contacts as well. All right, you can share it down here. Or in all honesty, you can also just take your Facebook URL. Here's facebook.com slash Realtor, and then send out an email blast to everyone. That's one of the better ways to do it. But if you click on the invite friends option, I don't think I have any friends on here. Yeah, this is just a, a business account. But if you did have friends, it would actually pop up and then it would give you the option. There's a little button to the right hand side that says invite. So you can actually go through there and you can invite them each one by one. Uh, there used to be some really cool coding where you could actually just send out an invite to everybody. I have yet to find that again. So if you happen to find it, please let me know. <laughs> But there used to be some type of different um, ways where you could just click like a couple buttons and invite them all. I haven't seen that recently though, but if you want to invite them over, there will be a gray invite option that's usually over on the far right hand side. And then you can invite them one by one. It's pretty simple. You just click the invite button, you just go down and down. It's going to be a lot of clicking, but yeah. it's a good way to get them to come over. All right, now to end the class, whenever you are on your Facebook 
Newsfeed. Oh, bam! I told you. It'll start to pop up once you like pages. So anyone that likes it, it could pop up for them. Alright, but you might have an option now on the left-hand side that could say pages down here, and it could display some of the pages that you're managing. Or if you went through and you actually added it over to your favorites, it'll be up here at the top left for you to access it that much faster. Alright, so it's pretty cool how that's set up. So there is your new Facebook page step-by-step step on how to set it up. So go out there, start having some fun with it, start tweaking it even more. Uh, it's going to be the exact same as how you want to just post out items, much like on your regular Facebook. If you're on the timeline over here, one last quick, quick thing, because I know it's 159 right now. We're back over on our pages timeline. I, ah, this thing's going to keep coming up. I'm aware. <laughs> it can actually come up. Just taught a class on right, creating a hashtag Facebook page. You can also use hashtags for searches now over on Facebook. They did that about a year, year and a half ago or so. But one other thing to note, you can also do photos. You can do emojis. You can actually post over here where your location is. Set a newsfeed audience for this post that we were talking about before. You can boost it as well. That's a paid advertisement. Right over here, you can change if it's public or if it's limited to certain different locations or languages. Or one of the bigger things is you can actually schedule it. All right, so if you click this little drop-down arrow next to post, you have the option to schedule. So if I click the schedule option, you can actually schedule it in the near future. So even if you're coming on here to post stuff, you don't have to say, oh, man, I've got to get over there. I need to post this today at 5. No. All right, do it whenever you want to and just schedule it to go out at 5. All right, so I can either just post it right now I'm going to click the schedule option. Say I'm going to send it out today. We're going to send it out today at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So it's going to come out in about an hour from now. Schedule. And as you can see, you have one scheduled post. We can see the post right here. So there you go. All right, so that's one extra little quick helpful tip for you. All right, so the class just ended. So let me scroll down to the bottom down here. I like to end every class the exact same way with some helpful information. So here is the KW support phone number, the eEdge support phone number, the DotLoop support phone number, our support email address, our website, which just got a huge revamping recently, and our YouTube channel, in which this class will be on approximately two, two hours from now, two and a half hours, three hours from now. Depending on how big it is, it takes a little bit longer to come up. For eEdge support also, after you hear a beep, when you call that number, once you hear a beep, there's a girl that talks, then beep, press number two. That's for tech support. Number three is for accounts, in case you need to contact about uh, getting or downgrading from the pro account. So there you go. So I'll leave this up a little bit longer for you guys to take a look at and jot down some of the information. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this class. It was actually an hour, just about right on time. It's crazy. Typically these Friday classes are only like 30 minutes or so. So this is a more in-depth one. In-depth. Depth. depth. I don't know. Not in-depth. In-depth. I think that's, I'm saying it with an F at the end. I don't know. It's Friday. I've given up. <laughs> and I only have two pretzels left, so I'm kind of in upset mode right now. I've got my half-drank water. So I'm going to sit at my desk, I'm going to drink my water, I'm going to eat my last two pretzels, I need to ration them out for the next four hours until we close to the weekend. So I get one pretzel per two hours. Alright, so on that note, I'm going to stop rambling. <laughs> you guys jot this down if you need to. Class will be on our Facebook page a little bit later on today. If you need to take advantage of any of our free services, or if you need to contact us about services as well, scottleroymarketing.com, you can see the support tab up there if you want to take advantage of some of our free services we offer to KW agents that we work with in their market centers. We know who you are. Trust me. I've learned. I know where the invoices go. <laughs> All right, but we will see you guys soon. Have a great weekend. Happy Earth Day. I know we're uh, a couple days late. Hopefully you spend it outside. And go enjoy. And it's almost May. No thank you, viewer 27. Thank you.